Hi guys, it's Grace from Grace Gets Gastric. Today is Tuesday, October 16th, and I am here today for my week 41 post-op VSG update. If you're wondering why my hair looks so nice today, it's because I just got it cut, and it is every 12 weeks the best my hair ever looks. Anyways, to start with stats, again, my name is Grace. I am 5 foot 8, 27 years old, and I have a hair somewhere on my face. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm 5'8", 27 years old, and on January 2nd, 2018, I had the vertical sleeve gastrectomy or VSG weight loss surgery. My highest weight ever reported was 354 pounds in May of 2017. I was required by my insurance to do a six-month medically supervised weight loss diet, and over the course of that six months, I lost 35 pounds, so my starting weight day of surgery was 319 pounds. Last week I came at you with a weight of 214.1, and this morning I weighed in at 211.7. So, that is a weekly loss of 2.4 pounds, a loss since surgery of 107.3 pounds, and a loss since my highest weight of 142.3 pounds. I am really pleased with that uh, number, 2.4 pounds at a week, that's great. Um, especially because I've had a couple of lower loss weeks in, um, most recently. Uh, 211.7 is actually not the lowest I've seen on the scale this past week. I have seen about a pound lower than that. Um, but fluctuations being what they are, bounced up a little bit today, uh, which is 100% um, my fault because I ate a lot of carbs yesterday. I'll talk about that later. Um, but it's still a loss and downward trend and I think I cannot believe that I'm almost in the two ten like the two the single digits the two single digits I don't even it's not the two tens it's the two hundreds I guess crazy um I have a lot to talk about my mind is all over the place I apologize in advance if a it's long like all my videos or b I'm rambly like a lot of my videos but I'm gonna roll what weird headspace you guys uh, first thing I want to mention is I have been getting a lot of comments lately. I feel like um, maybe I'm hitting a point where people are commenting who maybe have been holding off or I don't know. Uh, my landlord <laughs> said something. He's like, I'm sure you're getting lots of comments, but you know, you look great. And uh, it was nice. Uh, they moved in like a year ago. So they actually live in our building now. And it's only, there's only four units. And right now two of them are empty. So it's just me and my roommate and our landlords um and they've been doing a lot of work so i've been seeing him around like every single day and so you know he finally like kind of commented it was the first time even though he's been seeing me so that was nice you know he was a sweet comment um i think i've mentioned before that there was a lady at the gym who complimented me uh she said she said something again the other day uh, we kind of made eye contact and then she uh she was like i i told them that you know you should be their member of the month and i'm like oh my god please don't i don't want to be in a, a newsletter but it was just really sweet you know like she is continuing to um make comments i do kind of wonder because i work out on tuesdays and thursdays and there is a class that happens around the same time as my workouts and so i basically they, and so there are a lot of people that go to the tuesday thursday class and they get out around when i'm changing so i've seen them twice a week for like as long as I've been working out, you know, seven, eight months, longer even. And I do kind of wonder, because I don't really talk to them. I'm not a chatty person, not a chatty person while naked and trying to cover my loose skin. So uh, it's not like we're really talking, you know, like we'll nod. But I, I, sometimes I wonder like what they think, you know, like are they talking about me or are they, do they notice me at all, you know? Not like in a weird way, but I'm, you know, I just, I'm curious if it's sort of noticeable to them because it's clearly noticeable to some people. Um, I, like I, I've mentioned before that my hairdresser is really just so sweet. And so she was again, um, really excited to see me really complimentary and she just finds the whole thing really interesting. And so, um, it's nice talking with her and nice talking with her. I mean, she's a very thin person. She, um, has never had like the kind of weight struggles we have, but like, it's interesting to hear her perspective because she also, you know, weight is always on her mind as a naturally thin person who has probably never had like more than like 20 pounds of weight fluctuation, you know, um, just kind of like the universality of weight consciousness as a woman. Um, also, I think I've mentioned before that my boss or my boss's boss 
director at work is um, getting the surgery. She's getting the RNY, and she started the same program that I did right around when I got a surgery. And so her surgery is scheduled for the end of this month, and I'm really excited. Uh, she's on the pre-op diet right now. Um, we've been chatting. And it's funny because I've had the surgery on our team. She's about to have the surgery. We have a girl who can't have gluten, and we actually have a girl doing keto. So we have like a lot of low-carbers, gluten, you know, intolerant people on our team now, so it's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, so some comments. Uh, I went to my dad's house this past weekend. I don't think I mentioned that because it was kind of in the air, if I up in the air if I was going to go, but I ended up going. So um, I went to my dad's house. It was, you know, good times. We ended up doing a hike on Saturday. I am planning to do Machu Picchu next year as my reward for hitting goal. And really I'm going whether or not I hit my goal. So just to go, but you know, it's going to involve a lot of walking, a lot of hiking. And so um, I was like, oh, I kind of want to practice some hiking. I haven't really done much of that. And there is a hike in where my parents live. It's called Saddle Rock. Uh, I was under the impression that it was an easier hike than it was. So uh, it kicked my ass. It was awesome. It was ended up being like the equivalent of about 100 flights of stairs. Uh, my legs were totally fine. I wasn't even sore the next day, but cardiovascular was, it was, it was rough. Like I had to take several pauses because like I just couldn't breathe and I was breathing too quickly and getting a little dizzy. Um, but I made it. And I would like, you know, I realized like I would not have been able to do that a hundred pounds ago. And, um, so it was cool. You know, like I did that with my dad. My dad is super fit. Like he does, I, you know, marathons, he, he's a big runner. Um, and then with my stepmom who, uh, she's always been pretty thin. She's had some minor weight struggles as she's aged. Um, which is nice because I think she now kind of understands our weight struggles as children and she didn't really understand, I don't think much. Um, and she was worried she wouldn't be able to make it up, but she did. So uh, it worked out, it was fun. Um, it felt good, you know, doing something active with my family. You know, when I would go back home before, basically sat on the couch for two straight days. And this time we did a hike. And then on Sunday, uh, Sunday I normally, so Saturdays normally I do body pump. So this is not replace replacement of that. And then on Sundays I do yoga and then I have started doing my couch to 5k run outdoors. So I'm doing one outdoor run a week. And so, um, I was like, I want to do an outdoor run. So there's like this loop that we run that they run. Um, so we went and did that. My dad did like an insane amount of miles and you know, I did like two and a half, um, with my couch to 5k and we did it like 8 AM and it was like 40 degrees. It was so cold. Um, but it felt good, you know, getting that stuff done. And like we went shopping, we did a lot of stuff and I was just a lot more active, which is nice. Um, my parents are great, really supportive about the surgery. Um, it's one of those things where like my dad, again, he has never had a weight issue in his life. He is Mr. Athletic. He's one of those people that's just got like kind of this iron will and he doesn't really understand when people don't have like they don't if they you know how people can't do things he's he's not a very I guess sympathetic person in that he's not very good at understanding people different than him uh which has repercussions in other aspects of, of the life but you know he just has a hard time just understanding like how this could be a struggle basically you know and so that's always been a kind of an issue and uh he's really excited you know happy for me he would mentioned um you know, it, we went, I went down because it's his birthday. It was his birthday Monday, so it was kind of his birthday weekend, and you know, he was really happy to see me. Really proud that we were able to go on this hike that we wouldn't have been able to go on together before. Um, but you know, like he'll make mention of of people he knows who's had who've had you know similar surgeries. You know how they all gained the re regained the weight back, and sometimes I just feel like, and it's not like we you know I've only seen him a couple of times since surgery, but I do sometimes wonder if he's just sort of waiting for for the regain shoe to, to drop I don't know maybe because that stuff's been on my mind a lot lately that I'm projecting uh I did book a flight for my sister and I in February we're gonna be going to Orlando my grandparents are snowboard snowbirds and so they snowbird in like Clearwater or something in Florida it's like an hour away from Orlando so we're going there we're gonna hit up some theme parks but we're mostly going to visit my grandparents um as 
this might be the last time I see my grandma. She's getting up there. And so they, they mentioned like, they don't know you had the surgery. They know that you're losing weight, but they don't know that you've had the surgery. And so he's there like, it's up to you if you want to tell them. So I have to decide if I want to tell my grandparents. My grandfather is very critical. Um, we've never really had a close, I mean, I don't have a close relationship with any of my extended family. Uh, or not very many of them. And the weight thing was always a really big issue. And so he, I'm actually really nervous because my sister is still the same weight she has always been. And I've lost weight and I just, I'm worried she's going to feel like shit because he's going to say things that he doesn't realize. I mean, like when he sees my stepmom, he'll be like, oh man, you're not looking as fat as you used to. Like that's his compliment. So yeah, I don't know. That's a whole thing coming up as well. Um... Yeah, I mean, I've mentioned, I'm just, I'm struggling right now. Uh, I am just filled with anxiety 24-7. Uh, and it's not all weight related, but, it, you know, a lot of it is. I'm just, I'm just so worried. You know, I'm always thinking about the future. I'm always, I don't know, life right now just seems like it's kind of moving too fast. And I just really need it to slow down and... I feel kind of out of control sometimes um, and for a control freak that's really uncomfortable <laughs> like yesterday I ditched work early I left at 3 and I came home and I crawled into bed and I stayed there for the rest of the night and I uh, read two books and watched a bunch of YouTube videos uh, I got up to eat food which I brought with me into bed which I never do um, and it wasn't all great food for example my roommate got some pumpkin spice granola and I was like, oh, I'll try it and see if it's any good. And uh, remembered how much I love granola. Because <laughs> I haven't had granola since, like, real granola since before surgery. And uh, had, like, a thing of granola. And it was delicious. And uh, had a shit ton of carbs. And I didn't need it. Um, and I, uh, I don't know. I don't know, you guys. I, I just, I feel like I'm really struggling. And... The, the anxiety, the anxiety is just like all the time. I've actually been thinking about maybe talking to my doctor about getting medication for it, which I have no problems taking medication for that kind of thing. I've just never had such an intense issue with this kind of thing where I thought I might need medication. So it's kind of freaking me out that it's gotten so bad. Um, and it's just, you know, I was looking at myself in the mirror as one does. Sorry, I've got like this line of white on my pants. I don't know where it came from. Squirrel. I've just, so I was thinking, you know, before I had this surgery, I was kind of like, where would I want to be? And in my mind, I was always like, I want to be in a large top. A large top is not the biggest size that you can get because most places do go up to extra large. Some only go up to large though, so I would still be able to fit into that. Go to any store, get a large. I think, you know, like I've always been big. I don't necessarily want to be some tiny little thing, but I don't want to, you know, like I feel like, oh, like it's large. That sounds nice, you know? And then I'm like, I don't know about pants. Couldn't even fathom. I think I thought like a 12 sounded good. A 12 and a large, right? Like that sounds like a normal person. And I'm a large and a 14 right now. And I don't feel the way I thought I would feel at this point. I don't feel like I look like a normal person. And, you know, I, I wonder what I look like to other people who don't know me on the street. You know, like, do they see me and be like, that's like a, an average sized person. Because I feel like I look like a big person. You know, like, I, I don't feel like I look obese anymore. But I feel like I, I mean, I feel like I look fat socially acceptable fat okay fat but fat and I and I but like in my mind a person who can wear a size large top is not fat so where does that leave me you know and and I don't know if it's you know total body dysmorphia I can't process if it's my skin issues you know I actually feel very pleased with like from here up I think I've mentioned that before but like my, I mean, my stomach really does get to me. I, it's like I'm carrying like a 
volleyball, <laughs> you know, like a volleyball right in my abdomen. Uh, and I, and part of me is like, would I, I feel like I could be okay here if I just, maybe without that skin, but then, I, you know, I worry, I don't want to get into that mode, you know, just like you don't want to be like, once I lose the weight, I'll be happy with my appearance. I don't want to get into this mode of like, once I get plastics, I'll be happy. Uh, because I don't think that will happen. And I'm kind of worried that I'll never, I'll never be satisfied. Um, you know, my sister made this comment the other day, it pissed me off. Um, where she basically said something about like, you know, you're doing this to look good. And she's like, it's, that's fine, but you, that's why you're doing this. And I was like, fuck off. No, I'm not. Like I did this, like I had diabetes. I was terrified. Uh, I was unable to do things that I wanted to do. And like, I, I'm not lying. Like that's legitimately why I did this. I did not do this. I was like, wasn't unhappy. And I think she's projecting a little bit, but, but you know, but then I said that and then she's like, well, then why aren't you stopping? She's like, you don't have diabetes anymore. You can do all the things you want to do. Like, why, why do you keep going? And, I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I got surgery. Like, I did this major surgery. Why wouldn't I take it as far as I could? You know, within a reasonable, healthy barometer. But I don't feel done. Like, I don't feel satisfied. And part of that, I think, is I don't feel like I'm at a BMI where... Mo you know, like where I'd be comfortable getting plastics. I think I have too much fat really. And I think there are surgeons who would perform plastics on me, but I don't, it would be a riskier and it's riskier the, the heavier you are. I don't feel like I would feel safe going into those kinds of odds. So I need to lose more weight to get plastics. I also fully expect that at some point, like I am going to regain a little bit. I mean, I'm not like going into this with this, okay, I'm going to regain like 50 pounds or 20 pounds, but I also don't want to be wed to, you know, if I get down to 164 or something, you know, maybe I don't want to stay there. I mean, I, I, just, I guess I just kind of want to give myself some wiggle room to bounce back up. But I do wonder, you know, I'm at like 210-ish right now. I'm thinking 275, 280 is probably where I want to be. It's like 30 pounds away. Like, is 30 pounds going to be enough for me? Uh, you know, is it ever enough? Uh, can I, can I do, can I lose another 30 pounds? Am I just going to keep trying to self-sabotage and eating carbs for like no apparent reason? Um, you know, is regain inevitable? <laughs> is there any way, like, am I going to have to eat this small amount of food for the rest of my life? It, do I really have to completely abstain from the things that I, things that I want to eat and that I enjoy eating on occasion? Or, and if not, will I just completely backslide? I don't know. This is not a very happy video, I feel like. I'm plagued with insecurities and doubts and anxieties. I also have an interview for a new position tomorrow that I'm, I don't know how I even feel about it. And, uh, <sighs> okay, so I've <laughs> got a good loss. I'm continuing to lose. You know, I'm, objectively doing really well, I think, you know, and I'm not perfect with my eating. Um, I don't think I've ever claimed to be. My fitness pal is wide open and you can see all the times I go over my calorie goal, which seems to be every day lately. I can't seem to stop myself. Um, and it's not by a lot, but like I'm terrified about these little things are, are just gonna slide and I still need to read this book that my, my, my uh, therapist got me. I was at my parents' house this weekend and so I didn't really have a lot of time to read, but I'm thinking, hey, since all I'm doing is crawling into bed and reading because everything else is too much stress, maybe that should be one of those books I read. Um, 
so yeah that's where I'm at uh hopefully next week I'll be a little bit cheerier uh I know it comes in waves you know and and you know I pride myself on being open and honest as possible and I did kind of want to let you guys know that I'm, I'm kind of struggling right now. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I appreciate people's advice and thoughts and comments, but, uh, also, uh, super prescriptive advice and negativity gives me a lot of anxiety and I am not gonna... I'm not in a headspace where I can be super customer service when I respond to those kinds of comments. So um, just keep that in mind if you have any thoughts or suggestions to share with me. I'm totally open to hearing them. Um, but couching them as a, this is what worked for me and not a, you must do this or you're gonna fail, would be fab fabulous. Um, yeah, a lot of like prescriptive advice giving is, is contributing a lot to my anxiety, I will not lie. Uh, and a lot of the doom and gloom stuff. Just not not where my head is at right now. Anyways, I'm probably gonna have to edit the shit out of this because I'm just rambling on for the last whole 20 minutes of this video. But um, I'm going to go and eat dinner. A wonderful protein packed dinner that will hopefully fill me up and prevent me from snacking tonight. <laughs> I hope you guys are all doing better than I am, quite frankly, and um, I hope that your Octobers are going swimmingly, and I will be back next week, hopefully with another loss and a bigger smile. Bye, guys.